Hi, Humanity Church. This is Marla Neighbor, your Connections Pastor, and this is another Humanity First video. This month, I get to introduce you to Miss Berna Lee Swodak, who is just an inspiration of mine and an amazing woman. And she is going to give us a little glimpse into her experience with the church over time growing up and the greatest challenges that she had with exclusivity and what her experience was with that growing up. Uh, with her diverse family and leading all the way up until her years now. So enjoy this uh, short insight into Miss Berna Lee Swodek's story with me. One of the greatest challenges that I found in any position that I uh, served within the community as, um, I want to say the four, four walls of a building, uh, of a church, a church experience, uh, a pastor, pastor board, um, any of the different roles that I had, you know, women's ministry director, uh, babysitting in the nursery, teaching preschool. I always had a challenge with the exclusivity. And part of it was because when I came to my faith uh, in Whittier, um, the pastor there had a very homogenous church but he reached out to my family that, that was far from anything homogenized. <laughs> he actually would hear us and get to know us and identify us in his heart and mind as part of his family. It took a while for the church to come to that place because we seemed like foreigners to them because they were so used to, I'll just say their own kind. My father was an alcoholic and my mother was a rage -aholic. <laughs> and and so at 13, we were ready for a change. We were hopeful for a change. As children, the five of us, I'm the oldest, we were crying out for a change. And so we saw someone embrace us in our raw humanity, new faith, coming from being a Catholic to having the skill set, the heart set, the mindset, the compassion, the patience, really the virtues of Christ that Galatians talks about to literally walk with us through all of it. And and I was always just, and still am, he's almost 90 years old today, so, so grateful that I had the representation of someone who really took on the one sheep past the 99. But as far as the church as a whole, I saw so much of those two things, entitlement and exclusivity. And it was difficult for me to see where I could plant my feet, where I could fit, that I didn't have to remain incognito. As I got older, I wanted to be brave and I wanted to say what I wanted to say. So I've had this secret heart journey for a long, long time. So I observed this particular church, which is now Humanity Church, for a period of time. I resigned the position that I had in uh, one church as a, a children's coordinator, and I was kind of in limbo, not sure what I was gonna do, but I knew God would lead me. I knew it was time for me to move on. It was a long distance and I wanted us to be in a community. My husband and I both retired now. And the, uh, it, the, on social media, the announcement was made that they were changing the name to Humanity Church. And I sat in my living room on my phone looking at that statement and bawled like a baby. I knew. And as soon as my husband came in the door, I said, I have to talk to you. And they were launching that place August in the in the month of August. And I said, we'll be going to this. I didn't ask. <laughs> I said, we will. <laughs> and I knew that when I, before I stepped in, that it was a kindred spirit. And what I see so strongly is there's not a sense of entitlement and there is no exclusivity. And those are the things that bless my heart and all the things that are practiced there. And they might look like every other church in some ways. And it might seem like from the outside, it just is like any place else, but trust me, 
When those two things are at work with the virtues of Christ that are explained in Galatians, in all its frailty, in all its flaws with humanity, and all its efforts that are not always 100% successful, because that's life, there's something so clean and freeing about an environment like that.